Stir up, we beseech you, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Unprecedented heat waves across Europe, extraordinary floods across Pakistan, drought-ravished lakes and rivers cease to flow, and wildfires rage across parts of Australia, and once again, the United States. These are just a few symptoms of an ecological system dangerously on the brink of catastrophic failure. While many dismiss such signs as a part of volatile weather patterns, countless scientists suggest otherwise. Stir up, we beseech you, O Lord. Today's collect or gathering prayer couldn't be more fitting for our time. In the wake of climate extremes we've never seen before, it is time for us to waken from our slumber and stir from our casual acceptance of what has befallen us. Traditionally appointed for the last Sunday of the church's year, and still said as such in the Book of Common Prayer, the collect we prayed moments ago is an ancient prayer dating well before the Reformation and Cranmer's now famous prayer book. It was a prayer that warned people to heed the signs of the times, to prepare for the end of an age and for the final resurrection of the living and the dead. Its imperative language demands a response from us today and not tomorrow. Although originally intended to rouse us from lackluster faith, the prayer does seem apropos as we see the signs of another impending danger, one that affects not only humanity, but all creation. If the prophet Jeremiah is right, our unwillingness to change and persistence in continuing our destruction, destructive ways will very well bring upon us such destruction as never seen before. Now is the time for us to radically alter our ways of living in this world, to experience real conversion, so to say, and renew our biblical vocation to be caretakers and stewards of God's creation. Some might wonder what the church has to do with environmental care. I've even heard some accuse certain denominations or churches of being too political or leftist because of their advocacy for environmental concerns. Unfortunately, such opinions fail to appreciate the rich biblical imperatives for caring for creation. From the very beginning of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, we hear God command humanity to care for the created world. Formed in God's image, humans were to do as God would do, to nurture life and to sustain it. However, the biblical writers understood very well that we quickly forget our responsibility. Human sinfulness not only wounded our relationships with one another, but also our relationship to the earth. Later in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, God commands the people to renew their commitment to the earth by letting the land itself rest to have a Sabbath every seven years. God even seems to rage with anger at those who destroy the earth. As we hear in the book of Revelation, the nations raged, but your wrath has come, and the time for judging the dead and for destroying those who destroy the earth. So if we are to be stewards of the earth, to be caretakers of creation, and turn away from our abusive ways, there must be a conversion. But it will be a costly conversion, as Jesus makes clear twice in today's Gospel reading. 
Jesus reminds us that we must give of ourselves as gift to others in creation by taking up our cross and walking in his ways. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. The weight of the cross will be heavy. If we are to bear it and to truly give of ourselves to to living the way of our teacher and master, then we must give up all our possessions. Nothing ought to prevent us from living fully our vocation. If that be the case, then what are we to do? What concrete steps and actions are we going to take to turn away from our sinful misuse and abuse of creation? and live our vocation to be caretakers and stewards of God's creation. The gospel demands a radical response. Surface actions only go so far. Sure, recycling and green bins are good, but will we adjust our behavior? Do we always need to get into our cars to do errands? Or do we have to water our yards day after day simply to care for lawns that don't even belong naturally in this environment? Are we willing to truly invest into sustainable transit? Or will we continue to resist tax increases to subsidize such systems? These are but a few questions we need to ask ourselves. Our time for conversion can wait no more. If we wait, we do so at our own peril. Now is the time to take action, to reform our ways, and to live as we are called to live, as good stewards of all God's creation. Amen.